Hello, seniors. It's been a while, and I'm glad to see you all again. Another journey is yet to overcome. Let's step ahead in learning another exciting area of science that concerned with the study of inanimate natural objects, including physics, chemistry, astronomy, and related subjects. Students, it's time to learn physical science. Class, our lesson today, Properties of Molecules Based on Its Polarity. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define solubility, miscibility, and polarity and explain how polarity of molecules related to its properties. Let's review. Polarity refers to the physical properties of compounds and that the polarity of a compound is determined by the difference in electronegativity value of the bonded atoms and by the compound's molecular geometrical shape. Polar molecules have a symmetrically shape because of an even distribution of electrons and have a relatively high difference in its electronegativity value from 0.5 to 1.8 on the other hand, nonpolar molecules have lesser difference in their electronegativities value from 0 to 0 0.5 and are more symmetrical in its molecular arrangement due to even distribution of electrons. The spatial arrangement of atoms in a polyatomic molecule based on the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or the VSEPR theory determines the shape of, a of the particle and is designed to minimize the repulsion within a molecule. So what are the properties of the molecules based on their polarity? First, solubility. Solubility is a property referring to the ability for a given substance, the solute, to dissolve in a solvent. It ranges widely from infinitely soluble such as sugar in water to poorly soluble such as silver chloride in water. Insolubility is often applied to poorly soluble compounds. Solubility often applies in solid solutes and liquid solvents. In the figure, A is soluble while B is insoluble. The process of dissolving cold dissolution is relatively straightforward for covalent substances with polar and nonpolar substances. But what factors affect the solubility of substances? Solubility is greatly affected by the molecule's polarity. Since polar molecules have partially positive and partially negative portions, it will interact with another molecule following the law of electrostatic attraction or repulsion. For example, in preparing a solution of water which is a polar molecule and salt which is ionic substance with positive and negative ions, the molecules and ions will interact with each other, meaning the sodium ion will be attracted to the partially negative portion of the water molecule or oxygen in the same manner that the negative chlorine ions are attracted to the partially positive portion of the water or hydrogen. Due to this attraction, the positive ions, sodium, will be surrounded by the partially negative oxygen ion in water and in the same manner, the negative ion chlorine will be surrounded by the partially positive hydrogen ion in water. To be able for solubility to occur, the substances should have the same polarity following the concept of like dissolves like. Thus, polar substances will dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar substances will dissolve in nonpolar solvents. This is due to the similarity of their structure and distribution of ions in the molecules. If you know the polarity of molecules, you can predict whether or not they will mix together to form chemical solution. It's helpful to know which compounds are intermediate between polar and nonpolar because you can use them as an intermediate to dissolve a chemical into one. 
The nonpolar solutes again dissolve best in nonpolar solvents like fats, steroids, waxes, benzene, hexane, and toluene, while polar and ionic solutes dissolve best in polar solvents like inorganic salts, sugars, water, small alcohols, and acetic acid. Miscibility refers to the ability of a liquid to completely dissolve in another liquid solution. A distinct layer between two liquids will not form when you have a solution that is labeled miscible. When a distinct layer does form in a mixed solution, this is called immiscibility. For example, a type of immiscible liquid is oil and water. When mixed together, oil will essentially sit on top of water, resulting in the formation of a very noticeable layer. In this figure, the first figure is miscible, and the second at the right is immiscible. In chemistry, you can exploit this concept of forming a layer when you would like to tell the difference between miscible and immiscible liquids. A water curve called a meniscus will form when two liquids are immiscible. Thus, miscible liquids will not have a meniscus. This diagram provides an illustration of the difference highlighting the presence and absence of a meniscus. Homogeneous is a great term that should come to mind whenever you encounter the word miscible. A solution that is homogeneous only contains a single phase. In other words, when you look at a homogeneous solution, you will see a uniform composition of two or more liquids mixed together. Thus, think of the term homogeneous as a way to define miscibility. If you happen to not be in a chemical laboratory when identifying the meniscus in a solution, there is another way to qualitatively analyze whether or not your solution is miscible. Simply observe the liquids being mixed. If you see the liquids separate from one another after mixing, you can strongly conclude that the solution is immiscible. When both liquid molecules are polar, then they can attract one another which leads to mixing or miscibility. When the molecular liquid is nonpolar, then the water molecules attract only one another while ignoring the nonpolar liquid. The result is that the two liquids are immiscible. Let us define the physical properties of substances. Boiling point the temperature at which the vapor pressure and atmospheric pressure of a liquid substance are equal. Melting point, the temperature at which solid becomes liquid. At this point, the solid and liquid phases exist in equilibrium. Surface tension. The energy needed to increase the surface area by a unit amount. Viscosity is the resistance of the liquid to flow. Vapor pressure, the pressure exerted by a substance in its gaseous state. Volatility measures the rate at which a substance vaporizes, changes from liquid to gas. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of physical science and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.